do you have any um, any references or recommendations for people who don't understand quite like what normal movement might look like um, and how to differentiate between normal and abnormal? What what are we, might are we, are we talking about? Like a, like something that we can measure, or are you talking about like dynamically or? Uh, that's an interesting question. I would like to hear both, but I think, uh, mm -hmm. dynamically might be a priority in terms of. So, so dynamically is exceptionally difficult because movement happens at such a high rate of speed. Um, and so, so it'd be very like, so consider a, a basketball player going up for a layup. It might look perfectly normal, but if we zoomed in on his ankle at the moment of, of, uh, uh, in the moment that he leaves the floor, you might see that he's making like a frontal plane adjustment through the ankle that allows him to maintain his, his trajectory because he didn't know exactly how he was going to land. And so the body makes the, the, an adjustment and, and he's probably not even aware of it either. And so that still falls within a normal range because he didn't blow out an ankle doing it. Right. So it, it's probably an acceptable uh, compensatory motion in, in that case. Um, and so again, dynamically, it's very, very difficult to do so. And you also have to take into consideration um, the, the, the forces involved, the velocity, um, because soft tissues will behave differently, different velocities, right? So if I have a, a, a tendon and I move it slowly, it will stretch. If I have a tendon and I move it very, very quickly, it becomes very, very stiff. And, and so the dynamic behaviors are very, very difficult to assess. That's why we can't, we can't rely on, on passive measures or slow measures um, as a representation of what should happen at normal high rates of speed. Um, so so it, uh, I'll give you a for instance. So uh, we had a pitcher in yesterday, and um, he's coming off of a, uh, of a surgery, and, and, but he's back on the mound throwing. And he felt great. Everything went perfectly. But because he took a slow-mo video, we were able, actually able to pick out a couple of things that, that we didn't really um, think was ideal. And now he's aware of them, and we've made some adjustments as to how he's going to proceed, and, and he feels really good about it. But, but we needed the slow-mo video to do that because when you're throwing at 7,000 degrees per second or whatever it is for the shoulder, it's kind of hard to slow that one down with your eyes, right? Um, so, you know, when we're measuring something on the table, much, much more, um, simple in regards to what we would expect to see from a normal perspective. And then you're going to see more of the, you're going to see more of the jump from what I would expect to see normally to a, a compensatory adaptation. So how about somewhere at like middle ground. So maybe not a pitch or a jump, but maybe a, a squat or a deadlift in the gym. How, how do you look at someone and say, like, I, I mean, I know you've been watching people move for a long time and that's probably a lot of where this comes from. Yeah. Um, some younger coaches might look at that and they're not, they're not able to say he just doesn't have hip mobility or he's mm -hmm. just really tall. Mm -hmm. How do you, right. how do you differentiate between those two? How do I differentiate? Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to watch it and see, to yeah. be honest with you. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's really easy for me to sit back and say that. And, and it sounds like a cop out, but the reality is, is that's the reality. I think it's a good message though. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. Um, I, I told this story today. I'm going to tell it again because it's actually uh, um, somewhat fitting, somewhat fitting. I, I don't know. I mean, I just like to tell it. Um, so this lady goes to a park and she sits down next to a bench and she has a conversation with an old guy sitting on the bench. And it turns out that it's Pablo Picasso. So, so she, she goes, wow, that this is amazing. I mean, you're like the greatest artist that's ever lived, blah, blah, blah. She goes, would you draw a picture of me? And he says, sure. She hands him a piece of paper. He draws her portrait, hands it back to her. And he goes, that'll be $5,000. And she goes, wait, wait, wait a minute. You just drew for five minutes. She, she goes, that, that, how could that be worth $5,000? He goes, well, I've been doing this my entire life to get that five minute picture. Right. And so, um, you know, I've got, over, well, shoot, oh my God, I'm old. I got 30 years of looking at people and making mistakes. And, and so the picture that I have in my head of what is considered ideal um, is a lot different than somebody that, that's been doing it for 
four months or four years or whatever. So I have more reps in my head. I have a, I have a much broader comparison. So when, when I see somebody move or perform a specific movement, um, I, I have the capacity to identify it as a movement versus looking at the different pieces and parts, which is what I did when I first started, like everybody else does, because you can't see the whole thing. And, it, and it, it's not that it's some great superpower or anything. It's just that that's, that's the association with doing this for a really, really long time and actually paying attention. Um, and so, so you, you do the, the best that you can. You have, a, you have a, a, uh, an experience that you have. You have some rules that, that you have in your head that you've either been taught or you evolved or, or developed. And, and that's what you have to go by from a dynamic standpoint. So, um, and the, the nice thing about complexity is that, that because it is complex, there can be more than one right answer. So maybe you are right about something and, and you know, but maybe you don't know. And it's okay not to know. You just got to f- try to figure it out when you're, you know, and then you, maybe you rely on somebody else to give you some guidance. And that's why we do mentorship. You know, that's, that's why that mentorship stuff becomes important because there's a lot of things that you can't get in a textbook. There's a lot of things that, g- granted, Google knows everything, um, but the, the tacit knowledge that's associated with what we do for a living cannot be written down. It has to be experienced. You have to be in the room. You have to try to ask the questions and understand what happened in that moment that made you make that decision. And, and it's impossible to write that down. You just can't do it. And, and so, again, for the, for the younger coaches that, that struggle, it's okay. You're supposed to struggle because you're not supposed to know everything right now. And, and there is an element of experience that becomes essential to do this. And, and it also um, is reliant on uh, – someone else's experience that you spend time with. That's why it's so important, you know, to, to, to undergo mentorship or internship or spend time with other coaches and to ask questions and to say, why do you do this? And, and not turn it into an argument, but, but to determine like, okay, this is a perspective that I'm just not aware of, or I need to try to understand this better. And then that's how you get better. And that's how maybe maybe you see some things um, at a much later time than you do now. At least I hope you do. If you want to get good, you will. I love it. You, you've talked about before just seeing what you've done three years ago and just thinking, oh my God, I can't believe I used to do that. Yeah, I know. I, and, you know, I've only been doing it a couple of years, but I've had that too. Yeah. Well, if, if you, if you don't, if you don't hate who you were last year, you know, you're probably not getting better. You know, I mean, we all change and there's certain things that you'll, you'll never change. And, and, but, but if you keep learning and, and the thing that, that I've been preaching lately, um, I had a talk with, with one of our, one of our good buddies that, that is, is working at the professional level recently. And, and we were talking about going back to some of the older stuff that, that we used to look at. And, and I suggest you do so because you're not the same human that you were last year or, or two years ago or three years ago. And now when you read that same thing, you're going to read it from a different level of analogy that it might have a totally different perspective for you. And so I, as I'm going through some of this anatomical stuff that, that, that I've been working on, I just have a totally different perspective now than I had, you know, two years ago. And, and so it's a lot more meaningful and a lot, a lot of different ideas come to mind. And now when I'm looking at the patient, I have a different perspective. And, and so that's one of those really, really cool things about being able to look back and go, wow, you were an idiot for doing that. But, but look where you are now and, and look how much better you are, um, you know, for, for the things that you've done. So. You know, you can hate yourself all day long for that stuff. I do. But, uh, you know, you just keep getting better. And that's how you know you're getting better. And when you feel that way, right? I mean, if you said, wow, I was great five years ago, you know, then you probably suck. 